Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host, Jan. I do hope you lot are doing well. I really do hope that. Welcome back to the channel and welcome to today's video, which is a Chelsea news video where I will be talking about three different things today. The first being Ruben Loftus-Cheek, obviously coming back from that ruptured Achilles injury. He's played some football behind closed doors against Brentford B. Got a full hour in, that's superb for the midfielder to get some football into his boots. What does this mean for after the break? Well, we'll get into that in a bit. Remember the young Frenchman, Jeremy Boga, that Chelsea had that played a little bit at pre-season, I think, under Conte? Well, Chelsea sold him for a couple of two or three million to Sassuolo in Italy. He's playing in Syria. He's actually having a lovely time performing incredibly well. Chelsea have a very reasonable buyback clause, which it looks like they will exercise the use of in the summer. More on that in a moment. And also, Shrewsbury Town, also known commonly by Eden Hazard as Strawberry Town, if you know, you know, have failed to beat Liverpool's children. <laughs> That's right, in the FA Cup replay at Anfield, they put in what was quite a dismal performance, actually, and the kids beat them, Liverpool go through, and you know what? You can bet your bottom dollar Jurgen Klopp isn't going to send the kids out to Stamford Bridge and it will be a full strength Champions League winning Liverpool which is unfortunate for Chelsea but we're going to talk about that too. Before we get into the content today I want to remind you guys to subscribe to Football Therapy if you have not yet done so please do sub hit that bell notifications icon why not like this video to help me out and if you want to hang out with me on Instagram live streams follow me on Instagram. Right let's get into it and where should we start let's start with the FA Cup man Chelsea have drawn Liverpool in the next round. Well, I say they've just drawn them. They've basically confirmed that they're playing Liverpool. Of course, it was quite a controversial subject of Jurgen Klopp refusing to play his first team in that replay and going on a break and refusing to be there himself. So he sent the youth team coach and he sent, in his words, the kids. Although perhaps a lot of football purists thought this was disrespectful to the cup and indeed Shrewsbury Town, there would have been a lot of Chelsea fans that would have been like, yes, please play the kids. Come on, Strawberry Town, masterclass at Anfield. Let's see, get the win so we're playing you at Stamford Bridge and not Liverpool, knowing that Liverpool would absolutely bring their first team in the next round. Shrewsbury Town failed to do anything. They couldn't string passes together. They couldn't make an accurate cross. They couldn't win second or third balls. Basically, they let the youngsters grow into the game and they scored the goal and saw it out for a really worthy win in the end. So, like I said, Chelsea are now playing Liverpool at Stamford Bridge in the next round. Although this competition will absolutely not be a priority for Liverpool because they're going for, of course, the Premier League, which, to be honest, looks wrapped up for them, and then indeed retain the Champions League. But still, if they can win the FA Cup, they will try and do it. You know Jurgen Klopp isn't going to send the kids out again. He will send his full strength first team of Liverpool to Stamford Bridge and Chelsea will be outsiders and Liverpool will be the uh, heavy favourites to win that game, which is disappointing, but I guess if you're going to try and win uh, a title, a trophy, you're going to have to play the best at some point, but does it have to be the champions of Europe straight away? <laughs> anyway, whatever. Moving on, uh, Ruben Loftus-Cheek, Chelsea's danger man in the midfield, the difference maker, the beast, the technical, I can't think of any more things to call them. Anyway, if you watch this channel and you know me, you know that I'm a Ruben Loftus-Cheek super fan and I do not want to put too much pressure on him after such a serious injury to come back into form straight away, but him playing some football behind closed doors is very, very positive. He had been training with the under-16s, under-18s, under-21s, having a kickabout with them lot, but playing against Brentford B in a behind, well, is it behind closed doors if it's filmed? In a friendly is superb he got a full hour in and he looks very very good so that's great a few more games hopefully throughout this break and maybe Ruben Loftus-Cheek can return to the match day squad after the winter break I don't know if this is reaching a little bit but if he's in physical good shape he's looking quite healthy and fit then maybe he could be on the bench for Frank Lampard when Chelsea return to start the season again after the February break if so that would be massive massive news like I said I'm a big RLC super fan but he will offer a dynamic in the midfield that no other players offer. He is strong and can control possession and control the ball, much like Kovacic at times, but he has the offensive capabilities of, say, a Mason Mount, but perhaps without getting bodied off the ball so easily, he will be a massive factor in shifting the dynamic in Chelsea's in the way Chelsea play, provided he can regain form that he had before he got injured, which again is a big ask. I don't want to put pressure on him, but I'm just talking about Ruben Loftus-Cheek at his best 
can offer this Chelsea side so, so much. So like I said, it would probably be the likes of Mason Mount who gets dropped in this, and I don't think Frank Lampard will play a 4-2-3-1. I think he'll play a 4-3-3 with Ruben off his cheek in the left centre mid, and he probably will play just without a number 10. In my opinion, if you look at how Loftus-Cheek's played his best or where he does his best work, it is very much in that left centre mid spot facing forwards and running in, perhaps rather than a number 10 who might be turning all the time and facing down the pitch. That's just what I think. We'll have to see. Anyway, it's exciting regardless. All right, let's talk about Jérémy Bogart, the French winger. He looked really, really exciting when he played for Chelsea in that preseason under Conte. It was the same time when it was him and Charlie Musonda both looked very, very good. And it was like, oh, which one's better? Which one's he's going to keep? Do you know what I mean? This was kind of just before the Callum hudson Adoy emergence. And they both looked really, really good. Boga did look really, really good. He didn't quite make the cut, though. And I think Chelsea had a lot of good wingers back then. A younger Willian and Pedro, you know, both in their late mid, late 20s. Eden Hazard as well. Because this was like, what, three years ago? maybe more than three years ago, so everyone, all the wingers were a bit younger. I think we still had Oscar as well, do you know what I mean? So there was a lot of attacking midfielders, wide players. So I kind of get it. Chelsea sold him for, I think, 2.7 million. Actually, I'm gonna bring up this article and read it for you, give you some context of what's going on. In fact, before I do that, let me tell you about his season at Sassuolo at the minute. So Sassuolo aren't like a massive Italian club, but in Syria, he has six goals and two assists from the wing at the moment. So eight goal contributions and 18 appearances is pretty good. You know, if you compare that to maybe like Willian and Pedro's offensive output at the moment, but it's the kind of goals he's scoring as well. He scored two of, the, two of his goals, so a third of his goals in the league were absolute world-class goals, both long range bangers, one of them, he dribbles the ball, nutmegs the guy, and then like scores a 40 yard curler. Do you know what I mean? The kind of goal that Chelsea could really do right now when they can't break down low blocks. Sort of top tier Galactico Fantastico strikes I'm talking about here. Generally his stats are very good otherwise, he's got an 86% pass accuracy. He takes nearly two shots a game, so he wants to score. All very promising. So now let me cite this article from football.london about Jeremy Boga. So they talk about Chelsea trying to capture the signature of Jaden Sancho in the summer and they talk about there being a cheaper alternative. Now personally, before I read you this, I'm not necessarily sure that Boga is a alternative to Jaden Sancho. Maybe you get Sancho and Boga, provided if Willian and Pedro leave. Do you know what I mean? Sancho could replace Willian in terms of a starter. Boga could replace Pedro in terms of a rotational player. You feel me? Jeremy Boga, who joined Serie A side Sassuolo for £2.7 million a couple of years ago. There you go, £2.7 million. From like the development squad, that was probably a good deal for Chelsea at the time. It's said to be attracting interest from his former club, Barcelona, as well as several clubs from around Europe. So yeah, like I said, if you saw these goals, I'd urge you guys to go check out the goals that he's scoring. You'd know why Barcelona are suddenly like pricking their ears up. Do you know what I mean? Amid talk that Chelsea can re-sign Boga for 15 million euros, brackets 12.7 million pounds, has been confirmed by Sassuolo CEO Giovanni Carnevali. Carnevali that the Blues do have a buyback option for the 23 year old. So yeah, I'm pretty sure a lot of you know that. I think I've reported on that before, but that's very, very cheap for a player that's performing at a decent level. Although it would appear that the agreement is only valid until June. So yeah, a buyback clause until this summer, essentially. The CEO says, Chelsea can redeem him in June, he said, as per Tuto Mercato Web. That sounds like an Italian newspaper. We have excellent relationships with them. We met with them before Christmas, also for other operations, because we like it as we did with Barcelona, a to have a collaborative relationship. Right, so if I can learn to talk, let me read that again. So, well, they, Sassuolo met with Chelsea before Christmas to talk about Boga as well as other operations because they like having a good relationship as they do with Barcelona. I think it's a little thing he's trying to say there, like, Barcelona, want him too? I don't know. Here's the kicker. They can take him back. 
but we can also do an operation together. We can take him back. There is total openness. Now, I think this is one of those Italian translations that look a bit weird, but what the general gist of it is, the CEO has confirmed that Chelsea do have a buyback clause on the Frenchman. They're completely happy for him to come back to Chelsea because they make a good few million on it, but they're totally happy for him to stay. And he's really sort of trying to massage the good relationship vibe with Chelsea Football Club there. Maybe because they make a few million off Chelsea, but maybe because also they want another Chelsea player. Chelsea do have loads of superb youngsters. Maybe there is something in that. Who knows? It's also interesting that Chelsea sent representatives out in Christmas to meet them. I reckon personally Chelsea send people out all the time to speak to loads of different clubs. And there's loads of stuff that comes and goes about us knowing of, of stuff that might have nearly happened but never was to be. Do you know what I mean? Like, I'm not talking about these silly rumours that you get sometimes of, say, like, Roman Abramovich has Messi on his super yacht and he's trying to sign him to Chelsea. <laughs> I'm just talking about other stuff that perhaps we don't know about. So, it's exciting. He could definitely be a superb option. It would be a little underwhelming if, come the summer, Chelsea only sign Moussa Dembele and Jeremy Boga. That would certainly be a downgrade from Timo Werner and Jadon Sancho. <laughs> Still, I actually think Moussa Dembele would probably be a really good player profile of, of striker to sign for Chelsea in terms of nurturing Tammy Abraham and also having really good rotational backup, especially if Chelsea lose both Batshuayi and Giroud in the summer. And who knows, Chelsea's priority target may, may well still be Jadon Sancho and Boga might just be another backup option. But what do you think? Get down in the comments section below. Let me know your thoughts and opinions on these stories. Tell me about Liverpool in the next round. Can Chelsea beat Liverpool? Is it possible? How excited are you to see Ruben lost the chic and do you expect him to be in the match Day squad after February and Jeremy Boga your thoughts so Chelsea exercise the buyback clause for 15 million euros what do you think go and check out his goals first get down in the comment section below let me know your thoughts of course if you've enjoyed the content today guys please do like this video remember to subscribe if you're new to football therapy follow me on social media at football Yannick that's it from me guys I'm out you lot enjoy the football and I will see you later you ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck I'ma get it how I'm living, I'ma walk the walk Outline my lines, I rap through thought Body bag the verse, outline the chuck In my life seen trouble, hustle on the double Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle Yo chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble I only love this paper, sorry I don't I laugh me baby